Hey, what is up mortals? Tim here. And before we get into today's video, there's something I'd like to talk about. I'd like to let you all know that we have a merch store. Some of the items in it are only available for a limited amount of time. So if you're interested, go into the description and check it out. Each purchase helps us make more content. Secondly, if this video hits 300 likes by the end of the week, we will continue this what if. Thirdly, if you didn't know, only 41.3% of you guys are subscribed to us. So please hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the story. The long-awaited rematch between the rivals was finally here. Midoriya and Bakugo stared intently at each other. Bakugo had pure rage in his eyes. He was waiting to fight Deku again ever since the battle trials when they were still relatively new to UA. Deku used a cheap trick to get the victory. Sleeping gas? Really? He couldn't wait to teach Deku his place. Midoriya was sweating a little. This was Bakugo that he and Venom were going to be facing after all. Not only was Bakugo an incredibly strong person physically, but his quirk was also incredibly powerful. It didn't help with the fact that he was at an incredible disadvantage here. Bakugo wielded an explosion quirk, essentially a fire quirk. Venom was weak to fire, and they didn't have any support items to help counter the weakness. Ready to lose, nerd! Bakugo yelled. Midoriya tightened his fists. His heart was racing. He was trying to use breathing techniques to calm his nerves. Don't worry, partner. It's two on one. What we need to do is avoid his explosions and overpower him before he does to us. Izuku sighed when he heard Venom's plan. He supposed it could work, but Bakugo was a tricky person to fight against. Even with all the plans he had to use against him, Bakugo knew how to adapt to different situations. On one side, we have the explosive boy from Class 1A, a ruthless fighter in the ring, Katsuki Bakugo! Present Mike introduced. The crowds were cheering, excited for the fight. And on the other side of the arena, we have one of UA's finest, a boy with a rather strange and complex quirk, but incredibly powerful in his own right, Izuku Midoriya! Izuku paid no attention to the introduction. Instead, he formed a fighting stance as Venom was covering his body. Fight! Immediately after present Mike gave the go to fight, Izuku charged in at Bakugo. Bakugo rushed in as well, but with a right hook. Izuku smirked seeing this. He was ready to counterattack, but he felt a tingling sense in the back of his head. That only ever meant one thing. It's a trap! Venom said. Venom took control of one of Izuku's arms quickly and webbed Bakugo's face, distracting the boy temporarily. It left Bakugo open for an attack from the partners as Izuku launched several tendrils at him. As soon as Bakugo finished ripping off the webbing from his face, he saw Izuku wrap his arm up in black tendrils. What the heck is this stuff? Bakugo inquired. Izuku pulled at Bakugo's arm to make his opponent lose balance. But Bakugo caught onto the trick relatively quickly. He shot an explosion at Izuku's tendrils, which caused him to reel back from the intense pain. Izuku hissed in pain from the feeling. What's the matter, Deku? Scared? Bakugo taunted. Bakugo started launching several explosions at Izuku as he started to figure out Izuku's weakness. Izuku was keeping his distance from Bakugo, which the boy caught on to. He found that to be interesting, alongside how he reeled back from his initial explosion. He put two and two together. He had a feeling that Izuku was at least not immune to his explosions. He grinned and charged in at Izuku. Venom took over quickly and threw a haymaker punch at Bakugo. Bakugo was charging in too quickly to avoid the attack and was forced to take the full brunt of it, which disoriented him. Izuku and Venom didn't let the opportunity pass them though. Izuku rushed Bakugo again with Venom enlarging one of their fists. They punched Bakugo with the enlarged fist, having increased strength behind it as well. There was so much strength behind it that it sent Bakugo flying for a second until Bakugo roared with his explosions, launching himself back into the arena. That's it! Finishing move! Howitzer impact! Bakugo screamed. Bakugo used his explosions to rotate himself in the air and was coming down at Izuku. He released the attack on Izuku, creating an explosion large enough to consume the whole arena. Izuku was knocked unconscious from the overwhelming amount of pain he felt. Venom had to retreat back into his host's body in order to recuperate from Bakugo's last explosion. When Izuku woke up, he found himself to be in the medical wing. He looked around, observing his surroundings a bit more, while trying to remember what happened. We lost, Venom stated somberly. Uh-oh, I, I see. Izuku gripped his bed sheets before sighing. Recovery Girl, after seeing Izuku was awake, informed him that he ended up getting second place in the sports festival 
with first place going to Bakugo. Unfortunately for him, he couldn't partake in standing on the podium when All Might was giving everyone their medals as he was unconscious during the time. But they were able to arrange something for Izuku though. Suddenly, All Might appeared in the room, smiling at Izuku. He held up a silver medal for Izuku before he put it around the boy's neck. Young Midoriya, you did well in the sports festival. So don't let yourself feel too down about this one loss. Use this loss as motivation to become stronger. Izuku nodded his head in agreeing with All Might's words. The next couple of days went by before school started back. All of Class 1A conversed with each other about the recent events regarding the sports festival. Most of them seemed to be impressed with how the festival ended as well. No one expected Bakugo to let out such a huge and powerful attack. When Aizawa entered the classroom though, everyone suddenly became silent. Good, you all are getting better at quieting up, Aizawa said. Anyways, your display at the sports festival was also meant for several heroes to start scouting for potential candidates for their agencies. Not just candidates, but they also nominate hero students regardless of the year. Aizawa proceeded to show the students the number of nominations each of them ended up getting, with Izuku, Bakugo, and Todoroki all having a significantly larger amount of nominations than the rest. Aizawa explained how in previous years it was more spread out, but this year was simply an outlier. Regardless, each student, even those who didn't get any nominations, would be able to choose a hero to intern with. Today was also going to be the day the students would be making hero names. Midnight was the one who would be approving their names, as Aizawa wasn't all that good with making aliases. When it came onto Izuku's time to present his name, a couple of people seemed to be confused by the title. Midnight inquired, Well, I'll admit, I used to have quite a bit of a distaste for the name due to its meaning at the time, but someone went ahead and changed the meaning of the name. Now, Deku means, You can do it! Izuku exclaimed. Midnight smiled in approval of the name. Bakugo's hero names, however, ended up getting turned down afterwards, which infuriated the boy. Before we get back into the story, I would like to say that we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes over the hard facts of the anime presented. Now, in case you guys didn't know, we have a third channel called Anime Theory. Anime Theory mainly focuses on a large variety of mind-boggling anime theories. If you are interested in content like this, please go check the description below or click the icon in the top right corner. Now, with that out of the way, Let's get back into the story. Throughout the day, Izuku was still looking over potential pro heroes to intern under, until All Might approached him. Young Midoriya, how are you doing? Found any heroes you're interested in interning with yet? All Might asked. Unfortunately, no. I'm still looking through different heroes, trying to find one who would be the best choice, Izuku explained. Izuku noticed All Might was visibly shaking, which deeply confused Izuku. He seems to be scared for some reason, Venom mentioned. Come on, get it together, legs! All Might muttered. Well, well, Midoriya, you actually got one last minute offer, and it's from my old master. I was wondering if you were willing to consider. Hearing this, Izuku was immediately interested in this veteran hero he'd never heard of. Gran Torino seemed to be the name of the hero. If this person trained All Might, then they must have been a good trainer at the very least. When Izuku made it over to the address of the retired hero, he was honestly very confused to come across a rundown building. When he entered the place, he saw what appeared to be a dead old man bleeding out on the floor, only to find out that this was Gran Torino, and he was very much alive. Izuku found him to just be a senile old man, and he didn't find him to be worth much of his time. When he tried leaving, his spider sense went off, and he ducked. Oh, you got a little bit of quick reflexes, Gran Torino exclaimed. Venom covered Izuku's body and added the additional hero suit on top of it, before they charged in at Gran Torino. We aren't here to play games with you, old man. Venom tried to explain. Gran Torino was intrigued by Izuku's transformation, but he didn't really pay much attention to much else besides fighting Izuku. He bounced along the walls before he kicked the pair over and over again. A couple of times, Izuku was able to get the upper hand on Gran Torino. Venom became incredibly irritated with Gran Torino's onslaught of attacks before he took over. He was able to quickly grab the hero and pin him down to the ground. Enough of this, old man. You're very annoying. Gran Torino looked at the two with a bit of curiosity. Who are you? He asked. Venom groaned. No, really. It seems like there's more so two people controlling one body rather than one person. Sentient quirks exist. Venom lied, making up a reason for what he was. Gran Torino accepted the reason, but was still a little bit curious about the boy. He went on to explain that he wanted to fight Izuku in order to get a better understanding of his abilities. 
Izuku was told how his movements were painfully predictable. His reflexes, speed, and strength were explained to be his saving graces. Venom was a different story in which he could be quite vicious in his attacks. For the next couple of days, Izuku was trained by Gran Torino to become less predictable in his attack patterns before they went to do some patrolling. You'd start developing some weird habits if you continued only sparring with me. We'll be patrolling, and maybe even encounter some crooks that you can learn to detain in better ways. While the two went off to patrol, Kurigiri ended up bringing an assassin-like villain to the League of Villains headquarters in order to recruit him. Tell me, Shigaraki, what is your goal in this society? Stain inquired. My goal? Hmm, I suppose you can say that my goal is to kill that symbol of peace everyone looks up to so much and destroy everything I hate, Shigaraki stated. You are very misguided, Shigaraki. Any and all bloodshed should have a good reason behind it. You've provided none. Stain threw a couple of his daggers at Shigaraki. Some of his daggers Shigaraki managed to avoid, but others cut him in certain areas of his body. It frustrated him even more when he found out those daggers were meant as a distraction for Stain to get the one up on him. Stain successfully pinned Shigaraki down to the ground and pointed a dagger at Shigaraki's neck. Without any conviction, how do you expect to get anything done? Shigaraki pleaded for Kurigiri to send Stain back, but they were unable to do so. Stain was about to slash Shigaraki's neck when the man-child managed to grab the dagger. It disintegrated in his hand. He went on to explain how although he didn't appear to have the sort of conviction Stain was looking for, he did have a great desire in order to crush the society All Might built up over time. It was something that Stain even acknowledged as the one thing they had in common. I'll tell you what, Mr. Big Shot. I'll give you a bit of a parting gift for you to use when you absolutely need it most, such as when you're about to lose a fight, possibly die. This gift will prevent that from happening. But if you do end up resorting to having to use them, you and I will both know. You'll see you won't be able to accomplish your goals without the help of the League of Villains. Just that alone will bring glee to my face. Stain was given a vial with some weird substance inside it. Was it slime, maybe? He wasn't all that sure, but he didn't plan on getting the help of these villains in order to accomplish his goals anytime soon. He put it in one of his pockets and left through the portal to hunt down some more fakes. What Stain didn't know was when the substance formed an icky face while in the vial. Thank you all for watching the video to the end! Now, there are a few more things I want to go over before the video ends. On behalf of We the Celestials, I want to thank the writer of this video as well as the editors of this video. Their details will be in the description below. If you're a voice actor, editor, or writer, or you're just interested in becoming one of those, go to the Discord that is in the description of this video and hit up the head of one of those departments. We're always looking for members to join us. Now, that's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're interested. And hit that like button if you like this video. Until next time, peace out mortals. Have an amazing day.